It has finally arrived. I feel like I'm potentially the last person on the internet to have my palette arrive, but it is here and it is beautiful and I am so, so, so excited to dip into this palette and test it and review it and swatch it with you guys. Clearly, you know from the title, it is the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership 10 palette, the Moonlit Seduction. I am so incredibly excited, especially since I've seen this in person now. I am so excited to do this video, to play with the palette, and to give you guys my thoughts. So, you know the deal. Let's get straight into it. Before we do, let's do the YouTube things. If you enjoy the video, pretty please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell. It helps my channel out so, so much. I truly appreciate it. And we're actually going to get straight into desk view from here so that you guys can see the palette so that we can start swatching it and then we will create an eyeshadow look together. So let's get into it. All right, my friends, you guys know how absolutely pumped I am for this video, like beside myself truly. And I know that that probably seems dramatic, but Pat McGrath Labs is my favorite brand and the Mothership's are my favorite eyeshadow palettes. You only have to see how many videos I have of Pat McGrath Labs on my channel to know that. So obviously I was picking up Mothership 10 and actually the second I saw this palette, I knew that this color story was gonna be for me. And then I've opened the palette as soon as I got it just to make sure it wasn't broken and I I can completely see that I'm gonna get so much use out of this palette personally. I asked you guys on my community tab whether or not that you wanted to see a swatch comparison video or a tutorial review first. So if you haven't seen any of my Pat McGrath Labs like a initial reviews before, generally what I'll do for Pat McGrath Labs palettes is I will film a review slash tutorial of the palette and then I'll follow the video up with swatching and comparing the new palette from Pat with all of the other existing Mothership palettes or other palettes that she's released that I own so that you guys have a really comprehensive knowledge of whether or not you own similar shades like this already in your Pat McGrath Labs collection or your eyeshadow collection and you can make a well-informed purchasing decision. I was curious with this one if you guys wanted to see the swatch comparisons first, if maybe that was actually more helpful for you. However, the review slash tutorial won over first. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I am going to, in this video, I'm going to swatch this palette. I'm also going to do a new format where I actually swatch the whole palette so that you guys can see the entire kind of color story swatched. Don't mind these. These are from another palette. <laughs> and then I'm also going to, after that, swatch each individual shade on my hand and kind of swatch it out and blend it out a little bit so that we can see each individual shade kind of blended out and swatched out. And I'm also just going to give you my initial thoughts on how the textures of those shadows feel. And then we will move into creating a look together with the eyeshadow palette and giving you my final thoughts. I will put timestamps down below for you guys, just in case you're interested in only specific parts of this video, you can skip to those parts. I will have a lot of content coming up on my channel as well with this palette. I will follow it up as quickly as I can with the swatch comparison video and also with creating a three looks or a five looks or something like that one palette video with this. So you'll see a lot of content. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe. This palette on the Pat McGrath Labs website is 210 Australian dollars. And then she does have other bundles where you can purchase the uh, intensifies with it, which I did. And I'm actually nearly more excited to have this back in my collection because I recently ran out of it than I was to get the Mothership. I mean, obviously I prefer the Mothership, but this is how much I value this product, if you're wondering. It comes with your normal, beautiful standard, I mean, say I say standard, but the usual kind of outer packaging from Mothership's absolutely gorgeous. I really like this. I mean, I like all of them. It has the usual information on the back, made in Italy, expiry of 18 months. If you've seen a Mothership before, this is absolutely not new to you. And it has the beautiful drawstring right here. So you open up the packaging and then here's your beautiful Mothership. You have the shade names in inside the palette here, which is also detachable, I guess, if you wanted to maybe stick it on the bottom of the Mothership or something like that. So that is the outer carton of the Mothership 10. Then we have the absolutely beautiful Mothership. So if you've ever felt a Mothership palette before, you know it's hefty, you know it feels luxurious, and this is absolutely no different. On the back, you also get the expiry made in Italy, all of that usual Pat McGrath Lab stuff as well. Now let's open it up and show you guys. Ta-da! This palette, you guys, I say this so often and I know you're probably sick of me saying this, but when I tell you, when I tell you, you have to see this in person to get it, you have to see it in person. You know how 
when Natasha Denona released the glam face palettes and before I purchased it I absolutely knocked it and was like this nobody asked for this this is so basic so boring and then I saw the palette in person and was absolutely mesmerized and was like this was one of the most beautiful things I've truly ever seen in makeup that's what this palette is like. When you get this in person, I just don't think it's gonna pick up on camera because I don't know how to do my lighting to showcase how sparkly and mesmerizing each of these shades are. Not even just the special shades, but all of the shades, the metallic shades even in here. They're truly, truly, honestly mesmerizing. It's like looking at like a pool of stars. It's incredible. So I'm so excited to swatch these and dip into them and play with them. I haven't actually watched any reviews because I don't like to watch any reviews, especially of Pat McGrath Labs palettes and kind of come into the product with an expectation. So I have no idea what people are saying out there. But from my understanding with this particular mothership is that these astral shades are actually completely new formulas. And from my understanding as well, most of these shadows is new formulas. So she's either reformulated the mattes and the metallics in some different way and then she's reformulated these new special shades. So if you come into purchasing this Mothership palette expecting it to perform, especially the special shades like the rest of the Motherships, then you're going to be disappointed if that is like your clear expectation because these are completely different formulas. Now in saying that, these could be actually 20 million times better than the original special shades. I haven't touched this yet to know, but I'm just saying that I do know she has reformulated these to be different special shades. So we're kind of coming into this mothership with a completely fresh and new expectation and not comparing it formula wise to previous special shades from Pat because they are different formulas. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and swatch the entire palette on my arm just so that you can see the color story of the palette all swatched out next to each other. Then we'll swatch individually and then we'll create a look. They were the full arm swatches of the palette. If they looked a little bit dodgy, I wouldn't, don't take that as the palette, honestly. My swatch game is never the strongest, I can assure you, especially my matte strong uh, swatch game. Let's now get into swatching individually these shades out on my hand because I just really want to kind of give you guys my really initial thoughts based on the shade itself without kind of putting it on the eyes. So let me grab the names. This shadow that I'm swatching right here is Skin, Skin Tense Glow. And if you have any of Pat's motherships, this is obviously, it's it won't be a duplicate. When I do my swatch comparison video, I'll swatch it against all of these shades in Pat's mothership collection. And it will be slightly different, but it will be like splitting hairs different. It's really same, same, but different. But this is a good shade to have in a palette because it's beautiful for the inner corner. You could use this as a face highlight. You can use it as a brow bone highlight. You can use it as an all over lid shade for that like wet look. You know, it is a great shade. It's just that all of us that have her palettes know that we have about 10 of these already. Next up, we have the first matte, which is Rosewood Romantique. And this one right here, I know people were really talking about and going off online about how this is a really pink leaning palette. I, I don't find it to be pink leaning at all. I mean, I really don't. Yes, the mattes are slightly warm leaning, at least two of them are, but I don't find this to be pink. I really, really don't. Maybe I could see this um, shadow leaning slightly on the burgundy-ish side, but in real life, it's honestly just a chocolate brown. Now, is this is there a shade like this in Utopian Dream? Yeah, I'd be interested to swatch them next to each other, and obviously that video will be coming but it feels very beautiful and actually feels like one of the better quality mattes I've ever swatched from her. And now let's move to Platinum Dusk and I don't, I think this might also be a special shade because it feels like that. It feels incredible and honestly, for those of you that know me, how much did you know that when I swatched this shade, I was like, absolutely yes, this is a shade that I'm gonna use all day, every day. This is a me shade. I love this. I'm all here for this. It's like a taupey silver and I just die for it. I truly do. So next up we have VR Sextasy, which is an astral shade. And this shade feels like it's more creamy than the Utopian Dream 
special shades but it has that chunky kind of feeling but when you swatch it out it doesn't have any of those glittery chunks like a Utopian Dream does so it's like same same but different but it feels like almost a cream shadow and freaking look at that holy dooly this shadow feels like the special shade out of uh, subliminal that she has that kind of VR special shade I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head sorry out of subliminal but on steroids it's incredible. Next up we have Astral Gold Lust, and this also feels like the same formula as the VR Sextasy, at least to me. It kind of feels like Utopian Dream form special shade formula had a baby with the Astral Solstice formula. That's what it feels like. And I really love this. I don't super love a gold, but this gold, it's like a wet look gold. This all over the lids look would look just absolutely incredible. It's so wearable. It's not like too in your face. Oh gosh, I could even see deeper skin tones wearing this as a highlight and it would look freaking impeccable. This is gorgeous. We are now on to Extreme Nocturne down here, which is the darkest matte in the palette. These mattes definitely feel quite a lot more creamy and buttery than her other mattes, that's for sure. Which I think is a good thing because I do think that the one thing that needed improving is her matte formula. So that is the matte right there and this is a lovely cool tone type matte. I really like this. Really quite lovely for deepening eye looks up. I'll get a lot of use out of this shade certainly. Next up we have Bronze Devotion which reminds me of a bronze shade from Bronze Seduction. It's probably, this is pro definitely the most generic shade in the palette I believe. Very pretty but is a gorgeous metallic formula, like truly a beautiful metallic formula. It feels creamy, it feels uh, buttery, it's pigmented, a beautiful everyday wearable shade, but definitely one of the most generic colors in the palette in my opinion. Next up is Plum Cabaret, which is a really deep, obviously plum type color. And I think this is the one that everyone was talking about saying, oh, we're so sick of the pinks. Whereas for me, this isn't pink, it's more like mauve leaning, burgundy leaning, I guess, but it's just dependent on how you personally see color. Obviously everyone's gonna see color and interpret color differently. This is quite pretty. It's quite a lot more probably muted than what it looks in the pan. I actually think this is quite, quite a beautiful shade. I probably won't get a dramatic amount of use out of this shade I'm anticipating just because it is quite a bit warmer and you guys know I love a more cool tone kind of matte but it is pretty and this is a one and done on the lid as a side note with a deep kind of almost purple leaning red lip would look truly beautiful. Now we have our last two special shades down here so this one is Blitz Venus and this one feels quite similar to the top two but more metallic feeling and more less gl chunky glittery feeling and I don't say chunky glittery in a bad way either it sounds like I might but I don't mean it to be because it doesn't they don't none of them feel flaky in any way and this is gorgeous this reminds me of a more opaque version of the special shade in Belle of the Ball so the Bridgerton 2 palette that's what this reminds me of and obviously I'll compare them in the comparison swatch video but it's very pretty this is a very everyday wearable shade definitely a great one and done definitely great as with any of these mattes like it's really a staple kind of special shade in this palette and look at that wet look Oof. this last one is Astro lilac aura and this one is quite fascinating to me because in the promo pictures it came across quite lavender purple but in real life it it didn't seem to swatch that way when I did the the full arm swatch and then I think this might be quite I know it's not a duochrome but it it almost feels that way because from where I'm sitting and looking at the angle of this it is actually truly like a lavender but then it feels like on camera it's coming across more like silvery white but from what I can see it's lavender so I really like this this again feels like almost like astral solstice but more opaque and creamy feeling so why astral solstice you can really feel those like glitter flecks throughout it you can't feel the glitter flecks in this one but you can, it has that similar effect to like Astral Solstice in some ways. Not in shade though, it's a very different shade to Astral Solstice, but just that kind of feeling. But yeah, these are definitely new formulas for palette.
cut. They're quite different. They're a lot more opaque and yeah, I don't know. They're, they're definitely different and I quite like them. They're very beautiful, at least to swatch. That is the entire palette swatched out for you guys as the whole palette and also as individuals. Hopefully you find that interesting. If you don't, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll just do the arm swatches like I usually do, but I thought that maybe the individual shadows would add something as well. Let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to adjust. Now let's go ahead and uh, get that to my face and let's create a look with this incredible palette, shall we? Let's get stuck into this palette. I am so excited to put it on my lids. I'm going to take my Rare Beauty Eye Primer like normal. I am not sure what look I want to do because I want to use all of the shades, but again, I'm going to do like a three looks one palette or a five looks one palette using this. So, um, don't get too stressed if you don't see the color you want today. You'll see it in another video shortly. Uh, the first shade I am going to dip into is this one right here. This is an R104 from What's Up Beauty. I'll just lightly fluff this through the crease. So I'm just squirling on this outer corner here first. I have been using quite a few other brands lately for my last few videos since my 14 days of Pat. By the way, I have a whole Pat McGrath Labs playlist if you're new around here. So I will link that down below for you guys. But um, I recently did 14 days of Pat McGrath Labs, like is an everyday wearable series. And I haven't really touched a Pat palette since that finished a couple of weeks ago. And um, I forget how pigmented these mattes are. These mattes are definitely performing better than her earlier Mothership mattes. Like she definitely improves the matte formula every single time she releases a Mothership, which is great because I do think it's the formula that probably needs the most work. But in saying that, it's like, it's still a great formula. It's just compared to Natasha, Natasha Denona mattes, you know, they're, they're something special, right? But this is still great. Like, look at that. It definitely blends out beautifully and easily. I like this color. It's quite interesting because swatched out this looked quite chocolate brown, but on the eyes it looks like a ruddy, ruddy brown. And I quite like this. This is a one and done in fall. Like imagine this matte just as a one and done in fall with like a 90s kind of nude lip color would look amazing. Dipping into my rougher number 14, we're going to go into this cool tone brown right here and we will deepen this outer corner up. I'm just gonna like go full blown and probably glam today because I really wanna play with this whole kind of palette. But in my a palette where I, in my video where I do like three or five looks, I'll make sure I do some wearable looks so that you guys can get some inspo on how to use this on the everyday. Okay, I'm really liking this matte formula so far. These are blending out like a dream and so easy. I, again, I haven't watched any reviews on this palette, so I don't know if other people are feeling that way, but I'm into it so far. I don't know which of these special, like these shades I'm gonna use. I can tell you I'm not gonna use these two today. I wanna use this one because it's just my color. I wanna use this one. I wanna, I wanna use all of these today. And I'm just, oh goodness. I finally have my Intensify stick back. Oh my God, I missed this. This was one of those products where I was like, yeah, yeah, it's good, but you know, whatever. And then I used my stick up and honestly, it's been the longest couple of weeks. And I know that sounds dramatic, but it makes such a difference to makeup, truly. It really, really does. So I'm just gonna click on it, click it on up, apply this to the lids. It's just so easy to use and it stops so much fallout. It's just such a brilliant little stick. I highly recommend this. And it doesn't mess with your mattes. So I was using a lot of other glitter glues or, you know, concealer or eye primer or whatever to try and just test other things while I was waiting for my restock of this to come in. And the thing that I noticed was those other formulas really messed with my mattes. Whereas this formula does not mess with my mattes in any way, shape or form. So highly recommend. Okay, I'm actually gonna dip into this gold first and I'm not gonna wet my brush or anything. I'm just dipping into the gold. I wanna just see kind of how it applies. Oh yeah, okay. It's like glittery, I'm into that. Okay, this gold shadow, you guys, one, holy dooly, that is absolutely incredibly beautiful. If you tap this all over, if you put your bronzer through your crease and tap this all over the lids, it would be that incredible. It really would. 
Definitely has glitter fallout, so just be mindful of that. If you have hooded eyes and you find Pat's current sh special shades to be too glittery for you, then you will find this to be too glittery for you. Ways that you can minimize that glitter fallout to work for your eye shape or your preference in general is to one, use a glitter, goo, glitter, goo, glitter glue like the Intensify Stick or like the NYX Glitter Glue. And then two, also wet your brush because if you kind of do that double whammy, it's really going to like melt the glitter down and stick it to your eyelids. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, I'm just wiped off that shadow on that refa number two brush and now I'm going to dip into this silver shade right here. Uh, this one's Platinum Dusk and that original gold was Astral Gold Lust. And I'm gonna pop that in here. We're gonna mix our metals. Oh, that is gorgeous. Look at that, I love it. Oh, yep, loving, loving those. That's amazing. I'm just gonna switch to another little flat shader brush and we're gonna dip into this shadow now, which is Astral Lilac Aura. And we'll pop this on the inner portion here. I'm just trying to put as many shades on the lid to be fair, to just showcase them. Oh, I picked up way too much then, that's okay. I'll just like swoop that up here like that, just to, just cause I picked up so much of that product, whoopsie. Oh, wowie. That is absolutely incredible. I think this is my favorite mothership, you guys. I really do. I'm not even just saying that. You know, I didn't like her Utopian Dream a whole lot. I really didn't. This is my color story. This is just me personally. The only thing I would change is these two mattes and not because I'm like, oh, they're too pink or they're repeated. I don't find that. Even on the eyes using them, they feel quite unique to her collection. Um, I mean, same color story, sure, as some of them, for sure, but they just, they're different colors to me. I just would prefer these to be a little bit more cool tone neutral colors, like just actual brown browns. The metallics, every single metallic in here is a me metallic. I just actually think this is probably gonna be one of my favorite motherships, I'm not even kidding, if not the favorite. Too early to tell too early to tell, but I think it might be. I'm just gonna quickly go off camera and do my base makeup. Um, and then we will come back and we'll finish up the lower lash line and the eyes and all that kind of stuff. So just a ticky. Alrighty, I have my base makeup done. And I also put the Charlotte Tilbury black liner in the top waterline, the grayish core crayon from Linda Hall Hallberg Cosmetics in the bottom waterline. And I also put the Huda Legit Lashes on my top lashes, just to save some time, because I'm sure this video is pretty long. I will have the rest of the products that I'm wearing on my face linked in the description box below for you as well. I'm also wearing the uh, Victoria Beckham Beauty lipstick in the shade Girl, because I just wanted something that, like a lip color that really wasn't going to compete with the eyes in any way. I just feel so much better with my base makeup on foundation, really, sometimes. Well, all of it, all of the base makeup can really be the cure. Anywho's it. Uh, I'm gonna take my 777 shader brush from Delium Tools and dip into this shadow right here. And I will just run it lightly underneath the lower lash line here. And then just taking a rougher number three brush, I'll dip into a teensy bit of this dark brown and just really lightly. For the inner corner, I'm gonna dip into this one right here, which is Skin Tense Glow. That's beautiful. I will say, this lilac shade, the lilac special shade, it's so much more purple on the eyes than I anticipated from the swatches, and it just looks amazing. Like these, I just think these special shades look absolutely incredible. I know this eye looks really quite glam, but you honestly, can tone down this look. You can pick literally any one of those metallics that I put on this lid and just do the whole lid with that metallic or take away these darker mattes if you're my skin tone and use a really soft and neutral matte and put that one of those metallics all over the lid and it would be very everyday wearable and just stunning. And then obviously if you're a deeper skin tone, well then this is gonna be perfect for you. So yeah, you can really tailor this palette to be an any occasion. It's just amazing. That's the look complete. I'm gonna zoom you guys back so that you can kind of see the look from afar and I'll give you my final thoughts on this palette, although you probably know most of them already. <laughs> this is the finished makeup look. What do you guys think? I think it's truly, truly stunning. I really, really do. I am here for it. I, I love it. I love it. Okay, what are my thoughts? I 
really promise you, I can see this being my favorite mothership. I really can. This is so wearable to me. And I think it's really important to remember that when I'm saying this and the kind of thoughts that I'm going to give you guys right now, it's really personal opinion based. So just keep that in mind. This might not be your color story and that is A-OK. -okay. I always say with the motherships, if you watch any of my videos, pick the color story that is the most inspiring to you. I guarantee you won't regret it. All her motherships are spectacular but you need to pick color stories that are inspiring to you and that are something that you're realistically going to wear. Otherwise, it really is just gonna sit there and collect dust. This for me is my color story, especially for just right now, the moment that I'm living in with makeup. This is just everything I wanted it to be and more. I know I was not one of those people that was disappointed when I saw this mothership get released. I know a lot of people were and that's completely A-OK. -okay. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but for me, I was kind of looking for something this vibe and I'm really into it. I'm really impressed. The mats feel really good quality. I think with each one of her motherships, her matte quality definitely gets better and better and better. Like she's now getting up there with Natasha Denona quality, which I'm quite impressed with. And the metallics, like these special shades, they are a different formula to the rest of her mothership palettes in my personal opinion. They have this, there's like similarities in there. Like you can connect the dots, but it's like they've all had a baby together and that's why she's created these. So for me, I love them. I don't want the same formula over and over again personally. I'd love to see it change up. I love to try new formulas. That's my jam. That's why I try so much new makeup because I just love trying new formulas and different kinds of makeup. So this whole thing for me is just an absolute star of the show. I know I can already see maybe some of you disagreeing with me, but for me, I'm head over heels in love with it truly. I would say if I wasn't, Utopian Dream really wasn't my jam. This is my jam. And I think if you have a very similar preference to makeup that I do and color stories like I do, then you will love this because I am so stoked I have this in my collection. Hopefully this review was helpful to you guys. I'm so grateful to all of you that were waiting for my review as well. I know so many of you were. I feel like my uh, shipping took that freaking long. So if you are even just watching this video, thank you because I know there's been a million of them up and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch mine and hear my little two cents. Uh, it really does mean the world to me and I hope it was helpful. As you know, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm so behind in comments, you guys. I've really been struggling to keep up with everything with work and getting content up at the moment. So I'm really, really behind. Can you guys let me know if at times when I'm just really overwhelmed with comments um, or just like, sorry, not overwhelmed with comments because that's a really good problem to have. But if I'm really just like, I don't have enough time would you still like it if I heart the comment? Because I do actually read every comment. I just can't sometimes always respond. Uh, are you okay if I at least heart it so that you know that I have read it and I value, like I've taken the time to at least see what you've said? Just in those times when I really don't have the opportunity to properly respond, obviously I will still try my absolute hardest to respond to every comment as best I can. It's just that right now, um, a little, life is a little bit overwhelming right now, that's all. Um, let me know your thoughts down below, but please know that I appreciate every single one of you and every single one of your comments so much, and I truly do read every single one of them but I promise I will get to them. I really will. It was just going to take me some time. Anyway, <laughs> Woo. let me know your thoughts down below. That's the end of the video. If you haven't already, pretty please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps my channel out so, so much. I truly appreciate it. I hope that you have an amazing day wherever you are in the world and I will see you next time. Bye.